So we're here at Mould T Ishaf in Wales. Now this is one of the most interesting stone circles I've ever visited basically because I've been wanting to come here for years. We've tried to get here a few times, it's extremely hard to get to. I'm up here with Hugh Evans. We're doing some research on North Wales and Cadet Idris and the star map that he's discovered. But we stopped off on the way to look at this because this is a beautiful Bronze Age stone circle stroke can and it had a can in the middle, like a burial spot apparently, and it's a very unusual shaped um, kind of geometry, which I'll explain in a moment, which is based upon uh, analysis done by Alexander Tom, and also an outlier stone as well, um, and that suggests this was most certainly an astronomical stone circle, it was used to study and measure the astronomical features of the landscape. So we're just walking around the southern kind of part of this part of the circle. This is like possibly one of the entrances here. And you can see they're quite low stones. They're kind of chunky low stones, very tightly knit, very tightly put together. But very beautiful sight this. I mean, this is just the most stunning landscape as you can see from the shots from the air. And we'll just walk around, have a closer look at some of these stones and you can just see the style of this. It is a style we do find in this part of kind of Wales going over into Shropshire and other areas. But yeah, this is just unbelievable. Nick Cope has been here a few times. He's tried to get me to come here but never quite made it. So it's about 10 or 11 meters across, about 30 feet in diameter and it's a pentagonal geometry it's got five kind of sides to it which is thought to represent to have like five circles within it and each edge of that circle is kind of shaped into the outer edge of this main larger circle and you can see over there you've got the outlier stone behind the main circle and then you've got a kind of mound almost behind that and the beautiful valleys going off into the distance in other words, it was designed and laid out with geometry based upon five circles within it, with the stones making the outer perimeters of those circles. Now Critchlow, Keith Critchlow, done some research on this. He was the first to really sort of take another look at this after Alexander Tom took, took a look at it. And he believed it was really based all about the number five, which is linked with Venus. And he says, I quote what he says here, he says, Venus, as seen from Earth, moves around us, looping in close five times in eight years before repeating the cycle. It was on the basis of this pentagonal archetype that we proposed Moltai Ushaf may have been dedicated to the goddess Venus, or by whatever name the building community called this planetary archetype. And you can see, it's really hard to see, it, it kind of just looks like a circle from here, but actually it's not so if we go inside this is like the so-called kind of burial can that you find in the center here and you can see what's left of it it's kind of been dug out now there's just a few stones there and you can just see the the shape the kind of unusual shape of this circle here we have fellow researcher and explorer hugh evans he's going to be chatting about this and other areas of Gwynedd, this part of Wales, and this really is something quite remarkable. Here's one of the kind of bulbous stones we find, which is almost exactly north, Going in that direction, there's some more stones on the kind of hilltop over there. Nick reminded me to look on this for a serpent carving, and like you've got like potentially the head of the serpent there, and a kind of zigzag body going across the stone there. There's also indentations there, and another one on this side. So, whether that is a representation of a serpent, I really don't know. But you've got other stuff going on down here as well. So you have to kind of, what the hell is this? Look at this. So some kind of protrusion on this side, kind of going around here. 
almost like around the side. Is that some kind of spiral carving just there? Is that what that is? Or is it the serpent up here? Yeah, I think it's uh, down to interpretation. It's worth noting these things. This is a chunky beast, look at this. But this one over here is actually west, this outlier, which has been displaced. And we must remember there are 41, apparently 41 stones in the circle. They could, they could be wrong, they could be 43, they could be 40. We've got this one as well, of course. And yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful location. So it really is right on the top of the hill here. It's clearly meant to represent the most highest point. The fact you've got some kind of cyst or burial, potentially a can that was once in the center suggests this may have been some kind of burial site of a local chieftain or king. Now that's speculative, of course, because not much else has been found. There, is, there are a couple more stone circles that have been kind of fallen, kind of destroyed nearby many other sites in this area but this really is the most beautiful beautiful one that you can visit and look at that beautiful sun shining on that with the stone sitting up on this beautiful hilltop so this stone is way out to the north going over the hill i just wondered if there's anything of interest here because this could be an outlier that's fallen it's got some strange kind of almost like humanoid carving on the edge there sure what that is and then we have these three over here as well which are pretty much directly north of the main circle and again i can't really see much of any of these could just be rocky outcrops that are naturally here so i don't want to kind of make any wild claims but you can see those here and the main stone circle you can just see popping up over the uh, hilltop there. There's actually another stone over here. We'll have a quick look at this. This one just over here. It's like northwest from the main circle. This looks like it's been shaped almost like a chair. Look, look at this. There was talk from Nick, Nick Cope, about there being some kind of, sometimes people place an egg in the northern stone somehow. There's like a hole in it. So whether that was the hole there and this is the northern stone. No egg there, Nick. It's got some kind of shaping and carving on this. That is interesting. It almost looks like a seat. <music> So we're just finishing up here at Mole Te Uchaf. It's really hard to say that. And yeah, we've, we've had a look at some possible outliers. We've seen the Western outlier, which is the main one, which is part of this 41 stone circle. It's hard to see the geometry, but I've got some aerial shots and I'll show you the geometry that Keith Critchlow did. And I believe Alexander, Tom and others have been looking at this. And it really is a unique and beautiful place. So it's just near the village of Landrillo. Uh, and you can park up there and it's quite a long walk you can drive up a lane and get within about half a mile three quarters of a mile the walk's not too bad it's uh, it's well worth a visit if you can find it There's different ways to come up here actually you can walk you can do long walks you can do the shorter walk that we did and we drove quite far up and yeah you've got to check this out this is one of the most beautiful sites i think i've ever visited in ancient britain Thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. Hope you enjoyed our short visit to this wonderful stone circle up in the hills and mountains of Wales. We're going to keep exploring. There's much more to come on our journey when we look we're looking for megaliths, stone circles and other things in North Wales in Gwynedd relating to Caddy Idris and also the giant Idris. And look, we're going to be looking for star maps, the star map that Hugh Evans has uncovered. And Please subscribe, please check out our other videos, become a patron if you can. We'll see you next time.